Hi, welcome to another video on chess. Today we will be talking about constraints in chess and how it forms the very heart of tactics. So let's understand chess itself. Chess is a game based on rules, but rules also creates constraints. Also remember, chess is a zero-sum game. And finally, identifying constraints can really help you become tactically supreme. So to make the point, let's get to a chess board. So I have the board editor in Lee Chess open. Now, if there were no rules whatsoever, then the game would be utter chaos, right? Like you could have rooks being placed between four squares. You could have queens that live outside the board. You could have uh, multiple pieces living in a single square, which would just create a complete and utter chaos. So the very basic rules of chess, which says that you cannot have more than one piece in a single square, you cannot have a single piece occupying more than one square. Very implicit rules are also constraints. These are constraints created, which makes sense actually. Not, not all constraints are bad. So it totally makes sense. Um, even a rule of the rook being able to move only vertically or horizontally is a constraint as well because the rook can't go wherever it wants. The bishop can only move diagonally, which is also a constraint as well as a rule. But these constraints, which are essentially how it should move, how the pieces should be placed, can be viewed more as rules because that's the very nature of the game. But when I say constraint, it goes a step above. Now let's take this case. Let's assume that white and black play this game and there's only a rook and a bishop here and white and black both try to win. So the white piece attacks the bishop, the bishop moves away, attacks the rook, again the rook attacks the bishop, again the bishop attacks the rook, and rook attacks and then he runs away. And this can go on ad infinitum. The game would never end unless you have a player out of fatigue or boredom or just has a blind spot, moves to a square which he's not supposed to and therefore loses the bishop. So in other words, unless it is a man-made blunder, the theoretical rules of the game will never let this particular construct ever end. So when will this end? And that's the reason we need constraints. Now, let's say we have a king enter here. Right. And all of a sudden, um, if the bishop were to move here, you suddenly have a constraint, which is a double attack. So now the rook is attacking both the bishop and the king. So, so far the bishop is happily escaping each time the rook attack. But all of a sudden, now you have a limitation because the rules of chess says that the king is the one that you need to save, not the bishop. So king is at a, a level above the bishop. The king needs to be protected and therefore you end up winning the bishop. So this is an example of a constraint. In other words, if you truly understand constraint, you'll understand the heart of constraint is manifested in a double attack. So let's take another example. So let's say I have a king and a queen. I have a pawn here and a knight here. Okay. For to make it technically okay, let's just say that we have a a king somewhere here, like so that the board is totally fine. Now the idea is that if you do a double attack, then definitely it gives you a chance to create a constraint. So in this case, the constraint comes by attacking the king and queen at the same time. And there's no other option but to capture it. The king cannot say, okay, I, I can escape, of course, but then I lose my queen. So if I don't want to lose my queen, then I need to capture it. So I'm constrained to respond in a particular way. So if I were to capture with the queen, it's not that I've won the piece because now I'm subject to another double attack between the king and the queen. And this time, the king has to move and therefore you can capture the queen. And nullify the entire advantage that one has and you could say okay let me capture it with the king even in that case i still have a check where the king has to move i have to capture the queen and then we could say okay this is just a draw so let's make a small change here 
Let's put the same thing here, but let's assume that there is a couple of pawns or even one pawn for that matter with the king somewhere here. Right, and this would change the entire game. This would just allow the game to, for white to win the game here. So, even though when you look at it from a material perspective, white just has two pawns and a knight and black just has a queen, which is way more valuable than this. The idea of using constraint, the idea of using a double attack just makes a difference. Now, just for a second, think about the queen just being one step away. And now you won't have the same concept of a double attack. You could give a check, but you would not get that double attack going. And therefore, when you give a check, the king will escape. When you attack the knight, I mean the queen, the queen will escape. And that means that there's a good chance that this will not end with white winning. So that's the core of chess, the idea of a constraint. And, and the idea of a constraint is manifested in a double attack. Now let's think of what are the common double attacks that we typically see. So one example of a double attack which you've already seen here is that of a fork. Which is move the knight here, attack the king and the queen simultaneously. So this is a pattern that's going to manifest itself so many times in so many games. So how do you attack two pieces at the same time? Because that creates a constraint. Black cannot save both the pieces. He cannot say, okay, I'm going to make two moves. I'll move the king, I'll save it, then I'll move the queen. Neither can he say, you know what? Just give me a moment. Let me give you a check first. As soon as you move your king, I'll move my king. So these are all not possible because these are all just fantasies which break the rules of chess. The rules of chess states that you have to save your king. And by that means, you are constrained not to save your queen and therefore lose your queen. So this double attack is what we call as a fork. The second kind of double attack is what you would see in terms of a pin. So let's assume that this was the move, white has to move and you create a pin. So you're attacking the queen and typically the queen would just love to move away. But unfortunately, there is also an x-ray attack on the king. So there's no way that the queen can move here. So his only option here is to capture the bishop. Or move the king closer in either case he will be losing his queen and therefore white can still win the game just swap this out put the queen behind the king and all of a sudden now you have what is called a skewer which is the third kind of double attack why is it a double attack because there's an attack on the king and there's an attack on the queen the attack on the king is called a direct attack the attack on the queen is called an indirect attack so this is the third type of double attack. The fourth kind of double attack is what you would see when you have a discovered attack. So for instance, assume the knight to be here and what you can do here is to see that you have an x attack. You discover this attack by saying, okay, rook attacks king and knight attacks queen and there's no way of saving both. You could move the queen here, but rook will kill it. You can move it here, knight and rook will kill it. The best option, in fact, is to move the king away so that you capture this and uh, at least you get a knight in compensation. So to reiterate, there are four types of double attacks, four types of you know very fundamental tactics that appear in 90% of tactical puzzles that you see in chess, which is four pins, cure, and discover double attacks. And all of them have the basis, the concept of constraint which is you can only do one thing at a time based on the rules of chess. The very rule creates a constraint in chess. So if you learn to identify constraints and if you can put your opponent into more constraints, the chances of winning the game increases that times. I hope you found this video insightful and I shall see you in the next video. Thank you.